words important today as we consider what it might mean to say that our <coughs> beliefs and our values can have effectivity in the world, that our beliefs and values can be more than a personal solace or a mark of self-identity. These words are important as we consider what it means when we say our beliefs and our values. It is precisely the difficulty of some of these words, some of these concepts, that I want to highlight today as we consider how to unleash ourselves into the world as people with Unitarian Universalist identity. Now, when we consider our identities, we might rightly think about our families of origin, our ethnic backgrounds. We might think as well of our skin color, our sizes, our abilities and ailments, even our sexuality and gender. And I'm naming, of course, those things over which we have no control whatsoever. We are, all of us, as Lady Gaga says, you know Lady Gaga, right? As she says, we are born this way. These bodies, with their encoded genetics, are mostly the doing of our parents, and grandparents and great-grandparents back for millennia. Even before I let myself get a little plump, I had the basic body type and the elevated cholesterol level of my mother's mother. As we all aged, only 40 years between us, we grew increasingly similar, looking more like sisters than three brief generations in a matrilineal line. So it is. We inherit much of our identity, more sometimes than we know. And our skin color, our abilities and ailments, our gender and sexuality, these affect other components of our identity, things that have more to do with the social world than the biological. They affect all kinds of expectations about what we can be and what we can become, what neighborhoods, we might live in and their relative safety, what access to and level of education we might achieve, what contact with and quality of health care we might attain, what jobs or careers at which we might be employed, whether or not a bank will give us a mortgage and an we can afford, and so much more. It seems that in many ways, though not evenly, and certainly not neutrally, that which is in our genetic makeup takes on a value and a valence in the social world in ways as uncontrollable as how we are born in the first place. In other words, our outward identities, whether we like it or not, whether we intend it or not, these attributes which are largely out of our control are often the basis by which we are held in esteem or denigrated by others, even hostile others. Others define who we are, whether we like it or not. And the extent to which the judgment on, on our outward identities is positive and helpful is the extent to which we have privilege in the world. It doesn't really have anything to do with what we want or intend. In this complex dynamic between biology and social organization, some of us are unleashed, more or less from the very beginning of our existence. We had the privilege to develop relatively unhampered and unrestrained. And the global majority, the people of color, who are actually more in numbers than white-skinned people, they have been hampered and restrained for sure. Leashed and degraded by a global economy dominated by the white-skinned countries, these lives are virtually controlled by such entities as the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. And you know, the sole purpose of those entities is to maintain the status quo between the very few wealthy and the many poor between the few who consume much and the many who consume much, much less. This is our current socio-global construct. 
Now, it's no secret that the Unitarian Universalist denomination is dominantly, though not exclusively, a white-skinned religion. And I say dominantly, but not exclusively, because people of color have been part of this faith tradition at its roots in both Unitarian and Universalist strains. Yet their places and histories within our tradition have been erased and forcibly at times. And that is a sin of which we are all inheritors, just like we are all inheritors of slavery because our current economic relationships were built on and often are still built on slave labor. In situations much less violent than slavery, but no less dire, African Americans were dissuaded from UU ministry even into the middle of the 20th century, as all women, people of color and white, were. Vastly more funding was given to every foreign missionary effort in India, in Japan, in Africa, in England. More money was given than was given to the struggling American ministers and educators of color trying to settle churches in predominantly black areas in both the South and the North. These are sins we inherit through no direct actions of our own, not individually responsible for them, but we are accountable for their effects because we receive benefit from them. And once you know, you can't unknow these realities. Once you know, you can't unknow them. And so, we try to live our principles in ways that acknowledge and that atone for the evil that has gone before us, the evil that continues to swirl around us. As we acknowledge and atone, it is heartening to hear stories of what it means to live out Unitarian Universalist identity identity that seems to be part of one of one's own DNA and um, Dorothy's not here to uh, today to hear me speak well of her so Jeff will just have to report <laughs> it was amazing to me to hear a bit of Dorothy Hoskins UU and UUCC identity story there's a part of me that felt some envy as she described how church life was ingrained in family life how social justice was a norm in her parents' <coughs> beliefs, actions, and expectations. She displayed deep roots anchoring her, anchoring her continued engagement with affronts to justice, including but certainly not limited to her work in this church and her work as an educator with and advocate for the immigrant and migrant workers in this area. For Dorothy, and I am sure for a number of others in this congregation, though I don't know your stories yet. Social action in the very DNA is a sign of what it can mean to be a UU. I heard something else in Dorothy's words from several weeks ago, something that signals how all of us in this faith tradition are called to remember that we are bound together always by covenant, never by belief or doctrine. Dorothy mentioned that she doesn't talk much about the spiritual or the sacred. She doesn't use that language. For her, the moral and the ethical are the frameworks for proper living as a UU in this world. And moral and ethical ideas are the ones she draws on for solace and for strength when forces in our social reality seem bent on evil rather than good, on harming rather than helping. Dorothy's words, as I sat there, put me immediately to mind of how often in this space I evoke the holy and the sacred. How often I call for prayer to bring us to source, to something more than ordinary, to something divine. And I do this repeatedly, week after week, in her space, in your space. Just a few minutes ago, I asked you to read Sophia Foz's words, 
with her theist understanding of our faith. I bring my theology, which is different from Dorothy's and perhaps some others of you, different from Foz's as well. And my theology is received here. It is acceptable. It is allowable despite the fact that I am so new to you, even as Fawes and her theology are deeply connected to our UU heritage, <clears throat> even if we don't individually agree with it. Somehow, and I don't know how, because we haven't talked about it, Dorothy evidently translates from my language to hers and believes that doing so is correct and necessary. I call attention to these acts of translation or accommodation concerning our differences in belief and theology in order precisely to focus upon language. When I first emerged as a UU, out from behind my veil of unbelief and lack of faith, I struggled mightily with words like sin and evil, religion, church, worship, prayer, and God, especially God, especially that one. Because I had been Catholic for a short time, these words had meanings that I simply could not accept and which I would not tolerate. Sin and evil were originary and embedded in human nature that did not fit with my belief in the inherent good and progressive potential of humanity. <coughs> Religion and church were restrictive systems designed to stupefy the development of my intellectual capacity. That did not fit my definition of an unfettered search for truth and meaning, that place of work where I felt most competent and so where I wanted ultimate freedom. Worship and prayer. These words were just a great mystery, a great empty ritual without the last word, God. What is there to worship? What would I be praying to without a supernatural being, a father creator with ultimate power to judge me and everyone else, capable of meeting out eternal reward or punishment? Yet I'm atheist and can't convince myself otherwise. Something, somewhere out there, was calling my name. Something was calling me toward Unitarian Universalism. But I didn't know what or why that call was. I was confused, and I was at the limits of my understanding. Why religion? Why church? When none of my prior definitions was going to work in the context of faith and the human. It would seem that acts of translation and accommodation <coughs> matter crucially and deeply. So how were they significant in our context as Unitarian Universalists? Some of us make translations and accommodations because we assume commonality, an assumption that might at base be incorrect. A commonality because we find ourselves all in this space together. Even if our words are different, we must all be really referring to the same thing, right? That must be it. We would be like Sophia Fawes and her one God, whichever lives and loves, no matter what words we use. Live and let live. The words are irrelevant. I would argue that that's not a very productive attitude to hold. Some of us make translations and accommodations because of a generosity of spirit, an assumption of goodwill toward a self-proclaimed member of the community. It doesn't really matter what we mean by those words as long as we are all working together in the world for the same thing. Our beliefs matter less than our actions. But is that really true? What do we lose? when we are in the dark about each other's belief, especially since it's often belief that drives our actions, belief that is deeply rooted almost to the DNA, and so maybe unconscious or subliminal. If we don't know what we mean, what others mean, 
What insights about each other do we stand to lose? How much less connected might we be? And I am talking here, remember, about what goes on inside our walls, between each other, between people avowing or entertaining the possibility of a Unitarian Universalist identity. It is of fundamental importance that we are a people who form covenants, who purpose to be together in spite of our differences in belief. And for some of us, me, I purpose to be together because of our differences in belief. It is not that our differences are irrelevant, not at all. On the contrary, they are of the utmost significance. And that is why we must know each other better. We must seek out and entertain our differences, especially in our beliefs, those things we hold most dear. <coughs> when we know about each other's divergent beliefs, when we know about our differences, we are in a position to learn new things. We are in a position to recognize variation and the creative possibilities that that might give rise to. We are in a position to really respect diversity, to honor our distinctions. Within these walls, we can practice exchange and acceptance so that when we unleash ourselves into the world, we are better equipped for bridging differences in humble and heartfelt ways. Among us here, we Unitarian Universalists, even when we speak with different <coughs> words, in fundamentally different ways, we are striving for the same thing. We are striving for right relationship, for a just future, for peace for all for love as a foundation and a goal. Right relationship, justice, peace, love. These words, these ideals all presume the existence and the necessity of differentiation. If all is the same, there is no need to strive, to work, to struggle. All would simply be received and we know that reality is not sealed, it's not completed. It is precisely a mutual acceptance of difference that we must take out into the world with us, trusting that we are working for something like the same thing as are many other people of different faiths, and including people of no faith at all. Because we are Unitarian Universalists, we practice covenant amongst us. We trust that our differences are both important and not connection breaking. It is upon that basis of trust, a part of our denominational DNA, that we create connection outside our lives. American author, social activist, philosopher, and feminist, Grace Lee Boggs wrote, we never know how our small activities will affect others through the invisible fabric of our connectedness. In this exquisite connected world, it is never a question of critical mass. It is always about critical connection. It is when we unleash ourselves from assumptions about belief amongst ourselves and with each others that we can truly make a difference in the world, small as our denomination is. Our biological and social DNA may create for many of us a cultural privilege for which we must atone. An atonement or at one meant might just be possible when we unleash new DNA Unitarian Universalist principles into the system. Now I mean the seven principles, of course, but it is not as if we have an exclusive lock on those ideas. But when you combine those principles with deep covenantal attitudes and behavior, then something new is unleashed. 
when variety is welcomed and fostered, when desire for diverse beliefs and willingness to engage across differences is interjected into the social reality, then change is always possible. Evolution is happening as we speak. All the world and everything in it is undergoing mutation and change. When we unleash ourselves as Unitarian Universalists with our covenant and our principles united, when we unleash ourselves into the world fully with grace, humility, and curiosity, then we can begin to affect change for goodness and justice. Our presence helps to bend the ever-changing arc of the universe. We cannot assume it is already bent toward justice. Look around. How could it be? Or that in good time it will somehow bend itself that way. Our intentional acts of connection toward justice and through our UU identity. That will make a bridge <coughs> with those outside our walls, just as theological accommodation builds relationship within us and among us. Both inside and outside, our faith, our Unitarian Universalist faith, is saying that being together and accepting differences is always fundamentally more important than being the same. Our best is in diversity, which mirrors the ever-creative activity of the universe. And so collectively, in our anticipation of and delight in variety and the creative possibility of bridging differences, we act more like the universe acts, inventive, resourceful, imaginative, life-giving, and generative. So, can we all promise to unleash our UU identity? Can we remember covenant around difference as much as we remember our principles? Can we foster identity that looks for differences and entertains rather than flattens them? Can we together make room for the many and see the chance to learn and grow through difference? Can we stand by this faith which honors differences so as to make a difference in the world? So friends, let us promise that we will, today and every day, as you remember, you are loved, you are worthy, you are welcome, and you are needed. May you feel it so.
join us for worship every Sunday at 10 a.m. at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Canandaigua, a welcoming congregation. We are located at 3024 Cooley Road, four miles west of South Main Street, Canandaigua, just north of the intersection with routes 5 and 20. Look for the blue signs just before the turn. Your comments about this program or questions about the church are welcome at 585-396-1370 or at our website www.canandaguauu.org. Producer and Editor Daniel Brigham